So we got to call the meeting to order. Sure. Let's see. Yeah, 603. All in favor? All right, good. All right, um, Want to jump into the, the reports to give Doug a chance to get here? Sure. Sure. Um, <coughs> capital, the, basic, the only thing to report on capital projects is they now, I just got word today, they have a meeting scheduled for next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had a chance to look at the agenda yet, um, and I'll keep you posted as so. I assume that some meeting we will have to need we will need people there to show up and make the pitch. I'll okay. Keep you posted. And I'm sorry, the date of that? The date of the uh, town capital planning committee next meeting is next Tuesday, the 12th at 6 p.m. You got a frontier meeting that night, I know. Mm -hmm. We got a union meeting just before that. But. Yep. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I think it's uh, we do uh, principal. It's for beauty. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, renowned uh, singer, songwriter, and storyteller Courtney Campbell visited uh, Sunderland Elementary School on Wednesday, January sixteenth. This um, assembly was sponsored by our PTO, Miss Campbell. Uh, had been here at Sunderland around 10 years ago. Um, she put together a captivating performance uh, that was full of humor and highly engaging for all of our students, um, both teachers and students, uh, gave the performance a raving review. Ms. Campbell actually visited all of the elementary schools in our district that week. Girls on the Run. Sunderland Elementary School is looking to sponsor a Girls on the Run program for female students in grades three through five. Uh, Girls on the Run is a national program that helps to promote healthy lifestyle choices. Um, basically how it works, it's a 10 week, 20 session program that um, uh, teaches the students about um, problem solving, risk taking, anti-bullying, um, all with the uh, physical fitness incorporated into each session. The coaches are volunteer. They follow a themed curriculum and each coach attends a five-hour training prior to the implementation um, of the program. And the culminating performance is a 5K and this year uh, they're anticip anticipating 80 plus schools in Western Mass um, being a part of this, and it will be on June 2nd at Springfield College. There is a program for 6th through 8th graders as well called, called Heart and Soul. Um, and next year we're going to be looking at uh, putting in a district-wide program and um, combining the 6th graders from each of the schools because the, the number of participants from one single school might not be high enough with just one grade level represented. So we're very excited about that. We have a few um, staff members on board to be coaches, volunteer coaches, as well as a couple parents who are interested in helping out. Upcoming events, uh, this coming Friday, February 8th, um, most of our classes will be attending Shrek Junior at Frontier Regional. It's a musical put on by Jaduk Center for the Performing Arts. We have a couple classes also going to Northfield Mountain that day. We have a kindergarten parent coffee scheduled for Tuesday, February 12th. That's next week. Um, and then on Wednesday, February 13th, we have a, we're hosting a community appreciation luncheon for those who serve in our community. And uh, we sent out RSV um, or invites, and we're just, uh, we've been collecting RSVPs over the last week and a half or so. Also, that evening on the 13th is a PTO meeting on the 15th, Friday the 15th. 
uh, Valentine's for Vets, where we send students from all four elementary schools in the district to the uh, soldiers' home in Holyoke to deliver Valentine's Day cards. And then we have uh, February uh, winter break scheduled from February 18th to the 22nd. And then on March 2nd, we are planning a Read Across America Day uh, in honor of Dr. Seuss's birthday. <coughs> and each year we bring in um, student athletes. In the past, we've brought in student athletes from Amherst College. And this year, uh, we're bringing in athletes from Frontier to volunteer and read to the kids. So lots of great things happening here at Sunderland. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, great. All right. How'd you uh, hook up with Girls on Run? It's been a program that's it's been going on for a while, um, and we, when I was at Deerfield Elementary School, we Nurse <coughs> Jeannie Johnson actually was one of the volunteer coaches, and uh, a little while back, a um, Sunderland parent a approached me to see if we could sponsor a program here at. Sunderland, and on, on my end, it was as simple as sending out a, an email blast to faculty and staff, and then uh, third grade three through five families. That's awesome. And yeah, we um, there's a Western Mass, um, a woman who's the representative for Western Mass, so she came in and met with me to discuss the program and really what it entailed, and we just got it rolling from there. So we're looking to start mid March for it. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I think that's great too because I think yeah. doing stuff like that where you're tying in educational aspects with the fitness and boy, kids sure need more any fitness we can get them is completely better great. than a lot of what a lot of them are doing. So right, yeah, strong body. Yeah. yeah. You're, uh, are you all set for volunteers, or are you still looking for a few? They um, so they cap each program. Uh, with for 15 participants, mm -hmm. and um, they just don't want the uh, curriculum to become mm -hmm. watered down. Mm -hmm. um, and they're looking for two to three coaches, mm -hmm. and we have that covered. Now, 15 participants isn't set in stone, so if we have, you know, 16 or 17 or 18, they'll it'll still work. Um, but, you know, if we have a really high number of participants, we'd be looking to form two teams at Sunderland. <coughs> and parents sign up their uh, student athletes online. Yeah. Yeah. Walked up and saw the darkness and <laughs> get the location on and then scramble the middle. Okay. Yeah. Jump right into the financials. Sure. Okay. Um, going on the table is a series of wants. Um, total is $48,601.16 for uh, this set. Um, so I did, uh, at your request, I only emailed um, the results for January. Was the Excel spreadsheet everything you'd hoped for and more? Yeah, yeah. It'll <laughs> take a while to learn to navigate it well, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I also did send you a uh, memo with um, some highlights of um, the changes, uh, things that we have done to do some budget adjustments for uh, 2019. Um, that $31,551 took a little digging to figure out um, what had happened, but it actually was a transfer that had been executed and the lines that the money had been put into, the report was not picking up. So once we discovered which we turned it on and up came those, um, up came those things. So um, there was uh, salaries in... Um, it all boiled down to a certain function, which was in 2357. Then Desi has made some changes to the chart of accounts and how they would like us to report them. So, um, and with salaries for a tech specialist, that was moved to line 2130, which is uh, tech leadership and training, which is where it belongs. And then the professional development lines for both IAs and for teachers were moved to function 2356, which is professional development for staff. And it just had not picked up the landing spots. And once we fixed that, then that was fine. Um, 
Well, I also did a couple of other um, large-scale transfers, and again, this is from changes to the chart of accounts that the department has asked us to make and uh, for the purposes of reporting. So we had some um, salaries that were in function 2310 that was sort of like teacher specialists and special education teachers. They don't want regular salaries to be coded there any longer. They want just like stipended things and whatnot. So they've asked us to move everything to function 230. So the 195, excuse me, 191,551 dollars for teacher specialists moved into the same line as classroom teachers, and so it's lumped in there with that. Um, the 141,921 dollars for special ed teacher salaries, we created a new line within function 2305 for that money, and that money has gone there as well. We also did a journal entry adjustment to move the expenses so that they would also land uh, in that. And from this point forward, those salaries will be charged to the proper line. So that's taken care of that. Um, we had a curriculum uh, development stipend number that did not have a funding source but had some um, money against it. Um, we uh, took money from curriculum supplies and materials and also some finance and uh, some traveling the finance uh, part to be able to bring that into balance. And then um, there was a stipend paid out, four stipends paid out for Nature's Classroom, and so we transferred a little bit from the superintendent's salary and also from general textbooks, and that brings that line into balance. Thanks, Darius. So, um, so those are sort of the highlights of, of what the report um, had to say. So. I just want to say thank you. That answers all the questions I raised. <laughs> yes. Thank you. A little sleuthing. I feel like a financial forensics <laughs> expert these days. Uh, a lot of digging, but um, that's what we found out. So, now I was as distressed as you were, um, especially when I couldn't find it at first. So, um, I'm just pleased when the second night light went on and we realized what had happened. So, and, and just so I'm clear on that 31000 there had been funds set aside, or it what, had. What? There was a withdrawal done. We saw the withdrawal, but the accounts that were deposited into were not being we picked up by the report. Oh, right. So it just showed as a debit and not a credit. Uh, Got it. Credit and not a debit is in the, in the accounting window. So once we realized that those had not been checked off, we checked them off, and lo and behold, they came into the report and now it balances. So. I guess I got one other question. I'll now try to time to ask to ask it, you said at the last meeting that at this meeting you would present sort of a half-year summary of how the year was going mm -hmm. so far. Right. Um, is that sort of taking a back seat to other stuff? Because um, I haven't seen it in... Right. It's We're going to kind of infuse it into the discussion of the FY20 budget because in my digging around FY20, we've discovered some other some other issues that we're trying to wrestle with both in FY19 and FY20. So um, right now the general fund looks good. Our concerns are around revolving accounts at this point in time. So that's where our focus will be and it's sort of a, a two-year discussion. So. But we'll get information on that tonight or that yes. before? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. So we've done plenty of students towards public comment. Okay. Public uh I'll like to remain silent. Unfinished business, uh discussion items, further discussion of proposed fiscal year twenty budget. Hot <coughs> off the press. Uh, so thank you. This way, this way. Um, so, um, the very first page is sort of the 30,000 foot 
level on the general fund. Where some of the changes have happened um, and why they are what they are. Um, the budget is always a snapshot in time, so this is the snapshot we are at right at the moment. Um, so uh, if just to kind of go through, you're looking at collective bargaining um, is up at about 10.75%, which includes step um, forward movement on all salary scales, um, putting in uh, a little contingency for a potential um, cost of living adjustment um, as negotiations uh, progress. Uh, we put in a placeholder and that could change as, yep. as the collective bargaining process continues. Um, and then there's also been a request for an additional classroom teacher um, for sixth grade. So that's what comprises the bulk of, of that uh, those changes. In terms of um, non-union increases, again, um, we plugged in a little uh, cost of living adjustment for those as well, commensurate with what we're um, looking at for collective bargaining employees. And um, in one case, somebody's also getting a longevity bonus put in there. And another thing that sort of skews this number for this coming year is a change for 12-month hourly employees from 260 days to 262 days. It's a leap year and there's one other day that gets factored in. So obviously that's two per <coughs> diems times those 12 month employees that we have to factor in. Um, administrative, uh, the big news there is putting back a full-time business manager into the budget after you had pulled it out for this year. So that's um, what has caused that. Um. Should we should I wait and ask questions after she goes through maybe? Yeah, we do I can get an understanding of this whole front page, and then, and just, then there's okay. that, there's going to be plenty of discussion. Okay. Yeah. Um, big changes in the operational side is again the, the money that you transferred from the business manager salary and put into contracted services in the business department. TMS's contract ends on July 31st, so that's why that is that huge reduction. So the two sort of counterbalance each other. Um, some of the numbers are a little bit skewed in terms of percentages because the number in the overall budget line is low. So for example, in psychological services, um, Ben has moved some money into uh, another line, and so it looks like it's a huge reduction, but the whole psychological services line that was operational and not salary driven was only 22 22.55. So that's why it looks like it's a huge decrease. It's just um, the way that kind of skewed. Transportation, um, we put in, I put in a 20% placeholder. I just did a couple of years look back at how much transportation had increased over the years. The bus bids are due on Monday the 11th at the close of business and bid opening on Tuesday the 12th at 1 p.m. And at that point, we will know whether or not that's an appropriate placeholder or if we need a different number. Um, I'm also going to be checking in with uh, special education transportation as well. Um, Karen and I will work on that to try and just, um, again, tease out any potential increases. Um, other things are reductions in licensing and, and things like that, just kind of um, some little things here and there. So. The net change overall is $210,609 or 8.09% on the local side of the budget. And uh, this doesn't talk about grants or revolving accounts or any of that business. Uh, the second page is just taking a look at um, the revenues uh, that came out of the government's budget. Uh, so at the end of Fiscal 19, Chapter 70, um, was finally voted into the state budget at $867,288, excuse me. House 1 is $870,988, so that's the governor's number. It is a typical pattern for the legislature to increase that number, um, but for right now, we want to play conservative and not um, play anything else. We should see the House's version, which is House 2 of the budget, probably sometime in March. Usually the Senate doesn't come out with theirs until May. 
and then we hope that the governor signs by June 30th. Last year he did not, so um, you know everybody has a collective breath. School choice in the final budget for FY19. Um, what was voted at the legislative level was $334,592. Mid-year of the year following, there's always an adjustment to school choice based on the June 30th numbers. So the number you see in the House 1 number is $320,372. That's actually the number we are now operating under for FY19, so it's a reduction even in this fiscal year of 14000 and change. Because of the, um, the what our actual numbers were for choice and, and right. increments and things like that. Yeah, what they do is they start with a baseline yep. on October first. Right. They dip in again in March, and then they dip in again in June. And it's the June number and the full time equivalents days in membership, not days in attendance, but days in membership in the school. Mm -hmm. And they figure all that out, right. and that's how that works. Um, the December and January payments into school choice reflect the reduction. Um, I've already seen the drops, and it's a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars uh, a month. That again, so they will not only reduce based on the reduction in the number, but they'll also make up what they may have given you in excess um, at the beginning of the year as well. So we're starting to see that that number, uh, that adjusted number, come in as as that works <coughs> through. Um, last year you had a charter school uh, tuition reimbursement. Um, that's no longer there, so I'm assuming that the child is even no longer in this age range or has moved on to other, other places. So the difference in the total revenue coming in from those parts of the state um, is a reduction of $11,413. Right. Should we pause for questions? Do you have yeah. my first part? Um, sure. I guess I just point out that the way the town deals with the state aid in terms of how it affects tax in the school budget is the school choice number matters for the school because that's considered money that's available straight to us. Right. The Chapter 70 money matters only in a broader sense that the more Chapter 70 money, the better an argument you can make for raising, you know, for getting a, a budget because the state is kicking in more, but the money just goes to the town and doesn't come back onto the school accounts to be spent. Okay, so the increase, obviously, you know, it's still basically it's a dollar for the town versus a dollar for the town. It's just slightly different feeling, you know, because we don't then take this increase of a few thousand in Chapter 70 money and use it as, you know, show it as an increase in some part of our budget. Right. We just know that the right. town is getting a little more that's earmarked for the school. Yeah. And in the end, it is all In the end, it's cost. still a dollar to dollar. Right. Um, it's just psychologically slightly different. Yeah, and we'll get to the cherry sheets in a moment, so. Um, but before we get there, um, part of some of the um, reductions, and when you see the full blown budget at the end of this um, packet, you'll notice percentages up and down. Um, Two things you want to notice is the changes in the cost percentage uh, share, both at the regional level and at the union level. Um, you'll notice that at the regional level, um, your percentage is down uh, a little bit. Um, and again, that's happened really across the board elementary-wise, and the, re and the uh, Frontier Regional has picked up about, uh, you know, one and three quarters percent. Mm -hmm. on, on, the cost, on the cost share. So um, that's a change. When you take Frontier out and you're looking at the expenses that are only paid by the union, your percentage share has gone down just a scotch, but nothing that's really appreciable. Um, but that's, again, all part of this process as we do the district expenses. Mm -hmm. So that's 2595 down to 2584. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And you can see the um, the uh, numbers of students um, <coughs> at each at each uh, town mm -hmm. and at the uh, regional as well, and that's how that all gets figured yeah. out. Any questions? Okay. 
So now comes the dilemma part. Um, I was looking at school choice, knowing that we have a reduction of you know, 14,000, give or take, in the um, upcoming, uh, in this fiscal year, and how we would have to deal with that. And in my digging into some things, I have discovered some issues that we need to deal with. So, um, the accounting office uh, at the district level does a reconciliation with the town accountant on final balances on all revolving accounts at the end of the year, and he has done that. So the final balance for um, as of 6.30 was $122,180.49. There are some accrued payrolls from FY18 people who get paid during some of it is really FY18 dollars. So you need to subtract that from that amount. So it makes the net balance forward of $96,198.77. The anticipated revenue is the 320-372 that you just saw um, a little while ago. Um, and that's again per the School Office of Finance and that came out in late December. Um, so when I realized what the total revenue and forward balance was versus what had been budgeted. Correct. Uh, we've, been, we've been up against this, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, moving towards this day for, for yeah. uh, multiple it's years. It's what they call the uh, funding cliff, and yeah. we are there. Yep. So um, today we did a lot of work on trying to figure out ways to mitigate against going into deficit this year. And so we are going to use some funds from a variety of different sources to try and offload some of those things. Um, at the end of the day, if you look over the anticipated balance for FY19 going into 20, is still at a negative, but it's a negative $5,200. We are confident we can find that somewhere and deal with it. So. Where, so I'm sorry, where was where is this? It's uh, anticipated balance. Oh, oh I got yep. it. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Okay. Thanks. Yep. So the anticipated revenue for FY20, which mirrors the current reduction to school choice, which is how they do it, makes the anticipated revenue at 315. And obviously, we need to deal with the 5200 to get that off so that we end at least um, even. The anticipated expenses, I carried forward when I was building the budget what was in the last school choice budget before I got into the weeds on this. So obviously we have some work to do to figure out how we're going to mitigate against um, that. We have already done some of that work. We think that there, there will probably be some personnel reductions out of this, particularly some uh, instructional assistance. So we've done some scenario building around that. Um, but even if we come out even this year, we're still about $105,000 that, that we need to figure out how we're going to deal with that. And I don't have that answer for you tonight, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it obviously is something that Ben Darius and, and Karen and I and others who uh, deal with this budget are gonna have to take a good hard look at is how are we going to deal with this particular deficit issue. Um, if you look over on the right hand side, the little box, um, I did some digging into the back because I, I, there isn't really scratching our heads about how did we get here. So we did some digging back. In FY18, the um, school choice number was $390,518. The FY19 number. You're saying the revenue or like the yes. re yeah. And if you see that FY19 number, that 334, mm -hmm. 592, that was actually Adjusted one of those it. adjustments. Yeah. And what we found was that adjustment was never made. Mm -hmm. Wait, so, so you're saying that adjustment was never made by the 334, 592. I hope. We don't know. No, I mean, it was that a, by the business saying, office. Yeah, it was, by a, the business it was a problem office. within the school district or was it a problem at the state level? No, it was a problem. No, it was an error made within the business office. Yeah. That yeah, that's where I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. That the budget that was brought forward did not pick up the December new numbers, which right. were lower. Right. 
And so what we were using... The 390 instead of the, the 334. 334. Right. So that's part of the problem. So that left, and if you notice, the change from 18 to 19 is a $56,000 reduction. <coughs> you add the latest 14220 on top of that, yep. you wind up with a total reduction in school choice over two years of 70146 That's basically why we're where we are right now. So, as best as I can tell. I mean, that's it. Yeah. It, it's, it's, more, it's even... It's more than it's a little more than that, and because in, in in a sense, I mean, we you know we want, would pre prefer not to be cutting it anywhere nearly this close. Right. Anyway, even even without that seven. But. Right. Is is there? I mean, I look at this and I say our our the money we get from school choice is it's the five thousand dollars per kid plus it's the Fed increment. Right. Okay, and I think without having firm numbers in front of me, that our kid count over the time period shown, <coughs> shown in this little box is pretty stable. Mm. Okay. No, I think what, ha I, what I'm surmising is that we've had kids move on to Frontier, so obviously... But we 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 have kids move on to Frontier, but we've advertised openings and we've taken some in because our, our kid count right now is, what, 42, I think, for school choice? And... My, I'm just saying, this is my sense, without, I, I, I should have the data, but I don't, mm -hmm. okay, is that very little of that change, in particular what I'm looking at is the downward change, is be from a loss of body count, okay, and since the only other aspect of it is this fed increment, then the question is, has there been a, a significant decrease in the obligations we've had for the school choice students uh, for SPED services. And I'm thinking there must have been, because that's, that's the only way I get such a big decrease. And if there has been, yet we haven't in the budget reflected the, uh, you know, less demand, less need for those services for that school choice population. I, this is, I'm just trying to think, yeah. how does this number <coughs> drop so much? The 40. And, it, and, I, and I don't see how it's done it to a kid count. Mm -hmm. right. Well, mean, there have been a lot, there has been a loss of some students. The choice, I mean, I don't know what our final number is going to be as like kind of with the state, but I mean, FY18 it was 41. We're at 42 right now, so. Right. I mean, FY17, it was 46. I mean, these are my, I think I'm, my numbers are, I don't okay. know if they're the exact state numbers or they're like off our October 1. Right, but, but you also have to remember that it could be a body count, but it depends on when the kid joins or leaves. I, I get it, yeah, system, I know. So it's an FTE And count. I know there's an FTE thing, but I'm just right. saying ballparking, it's not like we've had like a dramatic reduction in the school's choice numbers. At the start of the 2015-2016 school year, we had 43 school choice students. Mm -hmm. uh, which year? 2015-2016. Uh, yep. yep. I can pull up the other numbers. Yep, yep. 43, right, and then 46, 41, 42. I mean, we're in that cutout. Right, that's what I mean, but that's not a, that doesn't get you exactly, a, exactly, yes. That doesn't get you a decrease from 390 to 330. three and a quarter. Mm -hmm. And that's off the division of local services, so it's a right. But the only other the it. only other thing that goes into that number, if I'm not mistaken, is the, the spending spending increment. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay, which is determined based on the agreed upon bed <laughs> services identified in the IEP. So or? and that would also be done by FTE. Right. So it's again, it's a wiggly number. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a good transition sentence because if you can use. I figured, I, you know, I, 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 I figured it's a good time to ask this. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Karen. Um, so we, I asked Karen to come on tonight, um, or Karen volunteered to come tonight to, you know, give us her um, thoughts on this because it is all, all these numbers are all tied together. And so, Karen, you can either yep. pull your seat forward, or you, you, you can jump over here, or you can, you know, just so people, you don't have to touch these bags. I'll come here, I'll come to 
Uh, first, I'd just like to say that one of the reasons I was coming here today uh, early on when I realized I was going to come is to just really be able to update and uh, partake in the conversation regarding the special education revolving account. Uh, and your quest and then when we started to recognize the school choice mm -hmm. deficits, um, it was clear that I would have to get in, just involved in the conversation, uh, just as your question, Peter. It comes up. I did pull the numbers um, as far as each student, and I took a look at it. So fiscal year 18, um, when I look at the final report for school choice for fiscal year 18, it had 47 students. Ten of them were sixth graders. And this year you only brought in five kindergartners. Okay? So last year you had 10 sixth grade school choice students, and you brought in five kindergartners. And the number I saw when I went, uh, Judy, into the actual roster for the October 1st mm -hmm. um, preliminary, that they give you the preliminary results mm -hmm. in December, showed 40 students. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so two things happened. You did drop by a significant number of students. But yes, as far as Peter's question, I could say, that there were uh, students within that 10 students that moved um, out of Sunderland in which the increment uh, would be higher than the kindergartners that you brought in now, mm -hmm. as it stands. Because understand it's like 20, what is it, uh, what is it now, 50? No, there's 5,000. Oh, 5,000 right there. So 25,000 there, so then, and then, yeah. And then if they didn't have any special education needs, there could have yeah. been. And, and I don't foresee it going up that much, but the question is, right, so when they're predicting, um, a lot of times your sixth graders already have their IEPs written and whatnot, so when you bring in the kindergartners, you have that child fine yet, so you don't really have that IEP written. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have that going out. So certainly it's a combination between the number of students and uh, the increments that you get back for your special education students. Um, the other thing uh, is we do have a significant increase in needs in preschool and in kindergarten um, at this time. So when you're really looking at where did that, where did those services come, you're right, we did not have the cuts um, even though the sixth graders were moving out. Right, so the spent services were transferred over to non-school choice. Right. And so we Absolutely. Were, we're very mindful of the number of students um, who we accepted for school choice and then also anticipating move-ins from that April meeting to the start of school which happens every year as well um, you know at when we voted for school choice openings <coughs> when we vote for school choice openings in April we look at the number of in-town commitments if you will um, siblings of school choice students in upper grades and then try to figure out um, how many we can accept to fill um, to fill the classes yet not um, accept so many that if we do get move-ins from April to the start of school that the kindergarten class size would be too high and we've had years where we've had eight students move into town in one grade level um, and sometimes zero so it's just it's a, Somewhat of a guessing game. We're ready to move on. Okay. So um, I just put in the cherry sheets. Um, They've come lately highlighted in blue, but for those of you who don't have um, the history of cherry sheets, the reason why they're called cherry sheets is back in the day when they mailed them to us, they were on cherry pink paper. Yeah. So, yeah. change them to cherry just to <laughs> be reminiscent of the history. history. We appreciate yeah. that. So, um, again, this gives you the full, because as you noted earlier, Peter, it is all one big bucket at the end of the day. Right. So, this gives you the full um, receipts for both education and general government. Uh, on page five, and then page six shows what they call um, the assessments that happened to the town. And at the bottom of the, assess of the assessment, you can see the school choice sending tuition. And here's another number that um, uh, this is like the third up of, like, from the bottom of the white stuff. Um, a school choice sending tuition in FY19's uh, charts 
Terry Sheet estimate was 53,600. The governor's proposal says 69,000. So there's a little more going out. Do you know if that's, is that, at this level, is this all elementary or uh, could it be both? It's, uh, yeah, because it's, the regional is self contained. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll notice that there was, however, again, that charter school sending tuition that there was that little team reimbursement for, that's not going out either. So the town has, um, you know, reaped the benefit of that. So um, so the subtotal for tuition assessments um, up a little bit, but not significant, and it was the, ch the loss of the charter school student that sort of offset um, the school mm -hmm. choice. Um, so. Good to have some good news. <laughs> I know, I really feel like the girl of bad tidings, and I apologize, but... Could, you, could I just go back, I got one more question about the school choice before sure. I forget it, and that is that I was under the impression uh, that at some point during the annual cycle, we got a school choice number that, for this coming budget year, mm -hmm. that knows which kids were going to be losing because they're graduating out of sixth grade, mm -hmm. but it doesn't know which what school choice kids we may be adding. Right. And that or therefore, it doesn't know who you might lose K through six either because somebody makes a choice to go back to home district or elsewhere. Agreed, but it does. They already know who's going to be leaving because they're graduating out. Correct. Okay. The others are unknown, but one would think there would be a bias to adding rather than subtracting because we'll be out recruiting a few probably. I'm just saying. Okay. My uh, my impression was, or my understanding was, that then at some point in this whole annual process, you then get a recalculation by the state that you know looks at who actually showed up in the fall and how many you've got that includes new arrivals and right. kindergarten or wherever and, that's and then that and then that gives you a new school choice number from the state and that's what the se december number is so you put your october report it's called the october one report yeah. right yeah. until the end of october to get it submitted right yeah and then it takes them to december to spit it back out to yeah. you okay but then is the school choice number we get the school choice amount that we get for revenue for fy20 mm -hmm. based on our FY19 school choice experience? Yeah, the adjusted number. They basically take that December adjusted number and they carry it forward to so the So that FY20. if we were to get 10 more kindergartners or whatever grade mm -hmm. show up first of September next year, mm -hmm. that does us no good on a budget basis until FY21? <coughs> it would, in the December adjustment, you would yeah. know that and they would adjust up but would it affect the would it affect the uh, FY twenty uh, state aid number? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It could make that could save the budget. Is what, that's yeah. what you're trying to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we won't know that until we know who shows up. Can't budget on what you don't know. Correct. Right. Correct. So the one of the reasons that we are where we are with the school choice is because that number in October was not as good as we might have hoped or not as big as we might hope and therefore everything gets adjusted down correct but we're doing two years of adjusted and down you're doing two years of adjusted down so either way it's magnified yeah correct it's magnified if you happen to be going up it's magnified the same way because they adjust right the current right. year and the future year right mm -hmm. okay and this is for those listening this is the danger of having your budget operating off of live school choice year right. to year. And that's right. why the early practice was, it was year in arrear, you didn't touch the money unless you had to. Right. And through tougher times, you start to slowly pick away at it, mm -hmm. and someone has picked away at it, and now uses it as part of its operation budget. Right, and then and the it's other- a dangerous area to be in. And then <laughs> the other factor here is uh, a question of whether uh, figures that we were getting at some point in the recent past were in fact not accurate. Correct. Because I looked at what I'd seen on what is now the current situation and said, how can that be when numbers that I was looking at not too many months ago were significantly better mm -hmm. and it was just that they hadn't been adjusted correctly. That's correct. That's what I finally found. Those numbers, I mean, the only thing I'd say that is, that's true, but those numbers weren't great. 
as you were just saying, we weren't a whole year in arrears. Oh, but we weren't at the at the cliff's edge. Well, no, we were at the cliff's edge, but we were, now we're underwater. Well, right, but, you're, right, but you're, you were you're being conservative enough for a few kids to move in and out without having to without. touch your bottom line. Right. Right. Um, right. And so, I mean, so you, clearly the next question is, well, what are we, you know, what about these numbers? Are we doing? So, I, you know, I am having our auditor come and look at. We look at. Um, talk to Tom Scanlon um, and um, play phone tag today, so I haven't firmed this up, but he's offered to come in and take a look at, kind of prove our numbers mm -hmm. for previous years um, and to make sure that all the information we have is correct. Because if you're looking at this, obviously there's going to be a lot of adjustments that will affect, you know, could affect programming and, and, and that kind of and, thing. And, so. and, and we have to be <coughs> able to explain clearly and accurately okay what is going on mm -hmm. why it happened where we are where we are and what the implications are okay because you know I mean I look at these numbers and these are not numbers that people are going to say whoopee yeah great you know hey, whatever you need you know have at it um, and so uh, you know, explaining it well doesn't get you any more money but exactly. explaining it well is part of the process that has to be done. Right. Um, and the other part, which is how we deal with it, is yeah, wow, okay. lousy. I mean, there is a. I haven't slept well yeah. the past couple of months. No, I, I've, yeah, I've been unhappy too. So I, I've, yeah. I've seen it. I've known this was coming, and it's just worse than wait. You know that. Yeah. When when I realized what had happened, than I thought. And it was actually something Karen said to me today, and I went, hmm, let me do a little more digging. And when I realized, and then when I touched base with Darius and we realized what we thought had happened was that that adjustment was not made last year. Okay. And then you've got a, another adjustment that we now have to deal with. But you're actually so you're actually straight with the town accountant as far as yes. the money that we have in that special revenue account is what it's supposed to be. Yes. And it ties in with your figures. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I mean the other piece of this story, I mean there is that is a, a, a uh, important piece of what we're dealing with that a bit again, like we've been talking about for a number of years now. <laughs> about this, pro this process and trying to move away from it and talking with the select board. I mean, they know they're, they're well aware of this. We've been talking with them about it. It's, it's why we've been pushing, you know, for the override that, that, that was passed last year. Um, the other piece of this is we're going to um, probably go up in, enro in enrollment next year again by somewhat because the total in the sixth grade is 21 and we've got 23 residents pre-K right now in the school, that, and that doesn't include people who are pre-K. Now, maybe not all, I guess not all of those are going into kindergarten, but, right? So yeah. your pre-K number is going two years. Two, two years. Two, two, two sessions, so, yeah. Right. Depending on, we have to get to look at the number. <coughs> so Ben, I'll task you to bring me, bring us the numbers for. But the anticipation I gather was that we were going to be two class. Kindergarten registration is taking place with the school to teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. That's a kindergarten registration, which means less school choice. You're starting up, right? So, yeah, we should have an idea. Yeah. Probably more school choice because there's three in the in there right now in the sixth grade. I'm guessing if we go to, assuming that we're adding that teacher, we have two classrooms, that we would be somewhere in that five range again. That would be our target. I'm just, again, it's just pretty speculative at this point, but based on past. I would guess we would be in that five range again for the kindergarten class. I wouldn't expect it to be less than three, but I guess it just depends on how many you think are going to show up. Mm -hmm. um, so where we're at <laughs> is obviously that that number is the eight percent is. Yep. We've got to show it to you. Yep. You yeah. Know, um, you know, we have to kind of go back and see what can, scenarios of what can be reduced. You know, first, you know, obviously, first thing we have to double check to make sure all the numbers moving on the, on this mm -hmm. papers are correct. Mm -hmm. um, because of, it's taking over, looking at multiple budgets because of carryover, 
that's why I said we're going to have somebody else come in and take a look at that. So that's kind of step one. So as soon as we establish that those numbers are correct, um, then we have to look at how do we bring that percentage down, um, and that's going to be some tough conversations that Ben and I will have to have, um, and because you have to look at how do you do this without affecting program. Well, right. And, and I, think we, I mean, there's a number of you know, things that I think would be good to, to like have clarity, and, and as we're talking about this too with the select board and, and ourselves. But um, so, uh, so the change that we're that for that with that eight percent, what's the change um, that we would put in from school choice in FY19 versus what we're planning with this plan to do in, in 20 so how much of how much of it is that adjustment there's a, how much is the another teacher each how much so each percentage point is just around 26,000 yeah yeah I guess it. around 26,000 so the teachers um, the teachers like teachers you know um, in this is probably two, two percentage around. points is two yeah. is yeah. Yeah, is two percentage points right so that's where that was I mean we kind of looked at it before based on what we were looking at this year based on your 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 average step increases this before we're in yeah. no bargaining so that's not out there right and again transportation being is out there as well but if everything kind of came in as normal um, before we were at the teacher we were at three or four percent right we, and then you had the teacher we were going to be at six or seven percent in a normal budget year without the school choice issue right and so now you put that on top that's what's kind of growing us forward so we were already coming in this year with a with a hot budget um, that we were gonna have to kind of kind of work through and now we're coming through with you know clearly something that's gonna have to be adjusted when you've got your <coughs> numbers on the page on school choice and mm -hmm. it comes down to what you've got there with a negative number of 120,000 right which were the intent was to at least get that up to zero right in the Wait, the negative 120 yeah, is based on that 5,000 so basically it would come out to about 105 um, and the calculation on the very last page actually shows you the real number if we got rid of that five thousand dollars. So it's about one hundred five six eighty three. That would be the deficit number. Okay, but but so in trying to in needing to take care of that <coughs> at this point, does that include any reductions in age or anything like that, or is that just is, the way it is? It's looking at the potential of reducing yeah. two more. Structures. So that's already built into getting to the minus yes, one hundred and five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's and also, that was put in because of we reduced the amount because of the, some of the special needs changes uh, uh, of students who are right. aging out. Right, right. but, but it's still, you basically got a good size number on the front pit, you know, out front, so, and then you've got more here that's, yes. that's screaming for the same set of cuts, you know, so you won't, it's going to like, I just want to make sure people realize that you've got to sort of add these two together right. to realize right. how big the problem is. Right. Correct. So you're yes. looking at, and again, if you're using those percentage point numbers, which obviously change the larger it gets, but right. still you're talking about closer to 11 to 12. Well, the 105 is like another 4%, and yeah. so 4 plus 8, that's 12% right there. That's what I said, 11, yeah. 12. So, yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that's the real, that's really where we're at. But, um, so, um, you know, part of looking at this is maybe we're going to have to look at what we can do currently. Mm -hmm. um, and... You know, again, and looking at what some of those options are, um, we haven't had a lot of time to. We've been when this was kind of brought, you know, um, you know, two days ago, and when this was kind of brought as a, this is where we're, uh oh, and then more uh oh's. Um, it was kind of more trying to double check the numbers rather than going to solutions at that point because it it, right. it was this. I'll be honest, if they say, this can't be true, right? You know, and they can't have these. Can't have this, then this, and then this. I mean, that's not a right. something I mean, the whole weekend. Here. I went digging right for for where where was the problem, and then um, today that that whole business of the reduction from the three ninety so, so to three thirty four was what the tipping point was, and that mm -hmm. me. So when wasn't. you're when you're saying one of the places you'd be looking at would be current year, 
Um, that's because basically that if anything that you could save in the current year would could be uh, taken out of the school choice expenses for the current year, which would leave more money carried over to next year. Correct. But right now we're going to. Right now we have to fix the five thousand yeah. that's in the current year. Right. Um, so we already have to do that, and right. we've already that number was higher. We've already corrected that before today. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that number was close to fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. We've already spent what we spent. I think from you know. 11 to 2 kind of working on. Mm -hmm. uh, you just so need to put in a few more hours. Yeah, exactly. 60,000 well, well, exactly. so <laughs> an hour. Okay. So, so if you can go at this for another 24 hours, we'll be all set. But I wish that was the problem. <laughs> 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 I, so do I, I mean, it's not a laughing matter. I'm, no. well, we've, I mean, this is. So we'll see yeah. the laugh or cry. Yeah, you got to laugh or cry. Good. Just to make sure I'm like, I just wanted, like, mm -hmm. that 120. 2, 180 was 630, 18. The 5, 194 is kind of projected 630, 19. Mm -hmm. And then the minus 120, if we didn't change anything, right. would be where we would be at 630, 20. Correct. Okay. Got it. Except that we actually a clean reduction of two IAs. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Already. 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 Which you could argue would be planned on anyway due to the reduction of needs. The service. Yeah. Um, okay, so sweet. We, we got hit by a few things. A couple of buried uh, monsters popped up. Um, this feels like, as far as a percentage increase in a year, like an excursion from what we should expect long term. I, I would think. So, I mean, we have to build a budget that is not reliance on school choice right. and um, the needs of the students in, in at Sunderland are not going down they're going up right and so we, you know, when I say needs you know um, IEPs and the plans and what they the, the services that they're needing um, you know it's not like we're seeing an increase and I think we're, we're not just seeing some we're seeing across the district there's an increase of younger kids with more uh, more difficulties and so um, that's going to be an ongoing cost that I don't, you know, is not, and so with that, and that's kind of what we kind of threw school choice at and, um, you know, sped revolving, which, you know, and I say that when Karen can jump back in at any point, but it's been revolving, okay, again, is, I kind of can't explain what sped revolving is, is in a nutshell, but, um, but she's been off, it's not her money, but she's, you know, she orchestrates it, offsetting a lot of other costs in this building right. with that money. But then this year we reached a point where it overextended. We used everything we could yeah. to keep down that budget. Mm -hmm. And so then when you lose some students that were either um, placed in through a, the Horizons program or choiced in, um, and we lose those, those are, those are com everything kind of, you know, everybody hit the term perfect storm, but there was a there are multiple things that hit the same year that we probably could have died if only one thing hit. But because we hit multiple things, yeah. it's not it's not making our life easier. Yeah. And the long term <clears> trend <throat> is, we're, as the town population grows and the building stays the same size, there's less space available for choice. So we're we're seeing that the number of slots available ramp down over time slowly. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's. Yeah, it's important to note that the um, positions that are supported through school choice and revolving accounts would be needed to support just the Sunderland residents. Well, yeah. Right? So these positions that's are, an, that's are, important, yeah, that's important. Are, are being created because right. we're bringing out-of-town residents in. Right. That's kind of where I just want to not, I want to survive 2020, but I don't want to push the panic button too early right. because if kids choice out, then that that's a whole another set of money that you know, the town right. has to pay right. for. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I propose we're gonna need another meeting prior to um, our budget meeting. Um, and where we're at there, we probably, we, I mean, we should probably have communication with the Finance Committee as well. Um, either invite them to that meeting, so or at least one of them to that meeting so that they can give us where the town is mm -hmm. because this number can come down, but it's still going to be a it's still going to be a reach year yeah. as per as proposed to a comfortable year. Wow, does that sound 
nice, way, mean, to, I nice way to put that, huh? <laughs> um, but, but I, and I would, I'd like to have them at the table sooner than later so that they can give their thoughts of what's nearly realistic and, you know, um, that kind of, and I don't even, you know, talk about how we do it yet until we know what that number is. <clears throat> do we have, um, do you want to talk at all this evening about uh, this couple of revolving funds, the early childhood and the, um, what it does for Horizon in terms of, you know, where they stand in terms of, because we've taken money out, you know, I mean, money, right. comes, we got revenue, I mean, let me put it this way. You've got a budget is not just a set of expenditures, it's also a set of revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most revenues you can't influence. Some revenues you can't. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're, you know, if there are places where we can close the gap by increasing revenues, that's a dollar save there, it's just it's a good, you know, it, it, it's okay. also a dollar, you know. I mean, and so what, and so we've already started going after those numbers? Right. Um, to offset this year mm -hmm. and the, in the, within this discovery of, of the school choice, um, we looked at that um, the early childhood revenue mm -hmm. um, and used some of that. Mm -hmm. We used some grant things that we are usually used on um, supplemental things mm -hmm. for the school. Um, we used some of that. We tried to take from different places so that we would not um, hurt one, one area. Um, and the third spot was um, special ed um, pulled from there summer services moving kind of things mm -hmm. around. So there's a, there's a lot of things kind of in motion. So I mean, we can talk about I mean we can talk about those numbers, but um, can I, I would just be me? careful when we talk about s s solving this problem in an open meeting because people's lives are connected to different things. And right. so if you know we said oh it's just you know yeah. if one of us was to say in it by let's combine tenth and eleventh grade, I'll use the grades that don't exist. And that gets up, then all of a sudden that becomes a rumor. They they were talking about that, and then it kind of it gets into a life of its own. So I just want to be careful. Um, I think it's at this stage it's best, in, and by all means, I'll take input from school committee members outside of a, the public meeting um, on areas, you know, thoughts and that kind of stuff. But I just I guess it's one thing that you want to make sure you keep a um, a school culture strong and moving forward, and not worry. It's for our jobs to worry about this right now. It's not for them to worry about that. And if we talk about those things, they sometimes worry about. It. Yeah, but that's that. If that makes sense, um, but so uh, you know, I'll definitely take your, your, I'll be your ear on any kind of ideas you have. <clears throat> yeah, I just thinking in general, you know, one of the things we used to do with the town budget, okay, would be to go through all the little places that the town charges fees. That the town, you know, basically has as revenue sources that aren't just controlled by the state right. or law or whatever. Okay, and look at them and say, "Whoa, how many years has it been since we changed this? Right. You know, what's the market? What's the market for this now? You know, is our fees reasonable to compare to? You know, or maybe they need to be caught up. Or I'm just saying, I'm not as familiar with the school as I am with some of those things, but I know as long as those things exist, they need to be reviewed. In a time when you've got a, you know, budget crisis, is as good a time as any to, to it, take another look. I would say every line's going to go through. I would also say that there is not a lot." Of pork in Sunderland's budget. Oh, I. Yeah. And so, because you know, because of the history, right. not too long ago, they stripped it down. At that point, right. um, and it takes, you know, it takes years to put pork. Right. <laughs> it takes years to put fat on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and even then, when you people call it that, it's you know, those are, you know, so, some of those things are, you know, you know they affect programming. Right. They all affect programming. There's nothing right. really in there that. Right. Yeah. Have we got? Um, I know there's, I just talk in general terms here, I know there's been, you know, there will be changes in the Horizon program just because of students moving in or out or something like that. Uh, I guess, you know, that can be in the state of flux for some time because that's for next year and, and just, who knows. Just like the school choice numbers could change, right. um, tuition into specialized programs could change, mm -hmm. you know, and again, we can't, and if we had something that was, on the rails where we thought that was going to happen, mm -hmm. we and we felt strong about it. We would probably put it into the budget as a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and those things change from and Karen sitting there, so and who has a hand on that kind of thing? It changes from month to month, right? And it's you know until we get it, um, 
you know, until things are solid. So there are some things that could happen that could very much send us in a, in a better direction. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of things have to line up, and right. a lot of things that we have no control over. Right. You know, um, and just as things could line up that way, you could also have a family moving to town that has significant needs, and that we have to meet those needs that have a have a price tag too. So it, you know, with each one, so there's a you know, little bit of I mean, there's no praying in school, but there's a little bit of praying going on. <coughs> You know, um, things that that, I mean, if you're lucky in our way, the school choice in Denver really hurts. Mm -hmm. really I hurts. offered to bring my stage piano and go sit out on the street with a tip jar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, so, we've got to schedule another meeting. Yeah. We need to schedule another meeting. Need some time to yes. put some stuff together. Well, we're <clears throat> um, obviously not next week, and then we got vacation week. So I think the realistic first week to look at would be the week of the twenty fifth. And Since there's no school committees that week, so so it wasn't. Um, no, we had money. Thursday would be better. Thursday, still better. Thursday the twenty eighth. Terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. terrible. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make the twenty seventh. That's how do few people feel about the twenty seventh Wednesday? Twenty seventh. Six p.m. Six p.m. Work for everybody. Yep. You hope you're busy. <sighs> no, not that. Not that. What's uh, we said six? Yep. So far, I'll make that work. Thank you. I mean, I mean, we know this, uh, um, you know, obviously the school choice is a huge driver in this, um, you know. <coughs> oh, but we've been trying to get but, off of it for years. Right. But it would be like that, uh, that last page. I mean, I guess like, we can pull it from other, um, from previous budgets, but some of that, like, kind of, the, the sources and uses things from the different things, the different ones. So, like on the um, yeah, because really what you're doing is comparing blue column to blue column because that's the local budget. The peak in the middle sort of shows what a total is, and then you see off to the right what's offsetting to create that right, right hand blue column, right? The all fund, right? So, the all fund really gives the total cost right. of that line item. Right. That would be and versus, then when you get to versus, the blue uh, thing, for example, if you look on the presentation, I'm like, obviously, they don't have the So, for example, if you look on page 11, you can see that, for example, classroom assistance truly costs $450,940. This is from 2330. Yeah. Um, but the net cost to the local budget is 146 um, um because there's 69000 coming out of school choice. Yeah. So wait, you can see so that sort of offset. Just in that one line, if you look at classroom assistance, I'm not looking at the total. 
Let's see. Oh, oh, the top, the yep. top one of it. And then here's the, 215 the net because versus. this comes off of here. Of choice, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And the next one, yeah, and the next one, yeah, and the the next one yeah, here, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can yeah, see yeah. some school choice yeah, and yeah. some right. bed revolving. Yeah, yeah. So you can see where the oh, various yeah. sources are yeah. that are offsetting. So right. it just gives so you more it, so a clearer picture of where it's coming from. And then what helps, too, when we're looking at this is like, okay, so our our total cost, say, instructional assistance is 572 in, in that we're projecting for FY20. Right. What was it in, um, you know, FY19, FY18? You know, and why the difference in that total cost? And then on the revenue side, you know, what else is happening? So there's, there's things happening on the cost side that we need we need more in certain certain years, less in certain years, and there's things happening on the revenue side. We can't keep taking it out of school choice, mm -hmm. um, so it's you know we're asking for it out of the the, the general fund. Yeah, thank you. So um, um, I would have to back into those numbers for part of fiscal years because that's not how the budget. I mean, we project. can pull it off our sheets too for prior years, but like, and it doesn't. We don't need to go back more than a year or two. It does become. It starts not to be relevant, especially mm -hmm. as you get too far. Like, like, unless you have questions based on, you know, what you currently using staffing for. Well, even what just needs going back and looking at what other ones are those needs in those change. It's hard to go back. Be from, from, from last year, you know, this year, like, if, uh, you know, are we changing that, and if so, why? Um, you know, on that cost side, and then what's happening on there? Because I, yeah, the question will come up. <laughs> Okay. I think the only other thing we got on the agenda is the rest of the report. I'll just say, uh, yeah, Superintendent's report uh, is we'll uh, invite the Finance Committee to this next, or ask someone from the Finance Committee if they care to attend the next meeting on the... I'll, I'll, certainly, I'll certainly go by a selectman meeting and inform them of the meeting scheduled for Wednesday the 27th right. and invite... Uh, in, you know, in these days, there's the, the chair of the finance committee usually at their meetings because they're doing budget hearings for the town. So I'll go to the, I'll go to the next meeting and, and invite them to come if they can. And obviously, I guess at some point we're supposed to show up at their place too. Yep. For yeah, we're still trying to we're trying to work that out. But at this point, you know, I mean, and I I, and I mean, I, usually there's in March, you know. Uh, and I will tell them perhaps with not many details that we have. A, significant challenge ahead of us yeah. and yeah. so on because they're going to know when it's you know yeah. all right so you'll take care of that so i don't have to i can also send an email if you want um why don't you send the one anyway and i'll just stop by and you know check in i i usually i mean i'll go by town hall tomorrow but uh yeah. it's, it's uh an email for you would be good too yep we'll do. This is just again, right, making sure I'm getting this right. This is with ending school choice at negative 105, which we can't do. Right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so that's yep, snapshot yep. at the moment. Yep. So. Okay. Um, you know, again, we keep everybody up to date about when meetings are happening for negotiations. So you can see up at the top, um, we have, um, I have information tonight if you want to go to executive session to talk about how things are going there. Um, just with the IAs um, at this point. But if you want five minutes to do that, we can certainly do that. Um, nothing profound, but certainly information, meaning that we've, we've exchanged some, um, some ideas and that kind of thing. So there's information there. Um, the school bus contract is out, as Judy had mentioned earlier. I did some handouts of the uh, rural aid. It's just kind of an FYI as you um, learn about the different politics are, that are going on right now. Um, as you know, um, last time we went after the rural aid from the state, you know, it started at, at nine million and came back at 1.5 million and the entire district, Sunderland was the only one to receive money at $4,800. So, um, you know, there were some there were some big, there were some winners and there were some big losers. And, um, you know, they're trying to look at looking at if, 
you look at the handout I gave you, and also included an email that kind of um, um, that kind of goes through what some of the new proposals are, because there are communities around us that are far worse economic shape. They got no money in considerable way. Yeah. You know, you look up at Montague and um, you know mm -hmm. Turner's and Greenfield, and they got no money out of that. And then some of these other, mm -hmm. you know, they're not really rural, but they're you know Western Mass kind of. Mm -hmm. I think so. They're kind of showing what the Wisconsin model did, and and then there's projected numbers if they follow the Wisconsin model. So I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk going on about it. I don't have a lot of faith in it um, changing, but you know, but then I'm in a pessimistic week, and so I think I should be more in an optimistic mood. Um, and um, so yeah, so we can see what happens, and then and even within the chapter, the chapter 70, there's a lot of talk about changing that formula. There are some models where um, you know Sunderland has some winning models where they do a little bit better. Um, the district, and I, again, I'm talking as when I continue like to talk about all the schools, as all the schools as a whole, um, certainly in many of the scenarios are the only winner in, in, in getting some money. Mm -hmm. the other, you know, a lot of the other scenarios are going to change all the Chapter 70 around, and um, three of our communities aren't going to be affected at all by it. So, um, and again, that has to do with um, income levels of the, of the towns. Um, the informational school choice, I just threw that on there. We gotta vote that at the next, and not at the next meeting, but I'll say that to the March meeting agenda. So the next meeting agenda will be strictly budget unless the chair wants to throw something else on that, um, to that. Um, the business manager position was posted on um, last week. And um, you know the, the timeline is to post it through this month, do kind of the interview process through the month of um, March, and then at the, April, the April joint meeting you know, have a decision where we're going to go. Um, you know, I know it's awkward with Judy saying, but I've had conversations with Judy. No, she's she's working fine. very hard, and um, that's just the, the way that we are. Right now. Yeah. Um, but that was for everybody else. I know. I know you and I. Um, so that's kind of uh, that is my. Almost interim for a reason. So yeah, okay. That, that's my. Oh, um, I also handed out the profit loss statement for the um, cafeteria. We had promised to to. I forget if it was this committee or another committee that we were going to look at all expenses toward the cafeteria. We haven't had a chance to do that in the, in the past two weeks. Um, I wasn't going to throw that in Judy's yeah. desk for the past two weeks to get what is insurance costs and all the other broken out. So it's, I haven't left my radar, but I just didn't want to. I had this information. I want to keep you up to date that we are in good place there. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so that's a, that's a good spot. So um, that's where I'm at. Can I just say I'd like to thank Judy because um, you've been very responsive tonight. I know you've put a lot of work into this recently, but it's, you know, I, I've been sitting here saying, okay, she's on top of this now, and that's, I, you got a real problem, but I'm really glad to see that you, you know, I feel like yeah, I got you, my sea legs now. you got your sea legs, <laughs> and, and the, the responses have been sharp and appreciated, and thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, like I say, it's been a it's a giant jigsaw puzzle in finding all of the pieces, um, which you know part of how we build our budgets at TMS is we have a, a very complex workbook with several tabs. So everything lives in one place. I'm not trying to figure out where your information sits. It just makes our lives a lot easier. So um, you know, the build has taken a long time, and then was over the weekend when I discovered this other issue, and then tried to dig. Um, Thank you. you know, so people, I, and I do have to say that people in the district, the accounting office has been wonderfully helpful. Karen's been wonderfully helpful. Louise, everybody, Darius has been very helpful. When I don't, when I can't figure out what the puzzle pieces are, I ask the question. And I get, people are very willing to help, so that's from the team. You know, uh, so that's how we get it done. So it's been helpful, you know, from, from the start of my head. <laughs> Are you looking for a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Or do we want to do it? We can talk. I mean, the other option is executive session. Uh, it's, you know, you know, you could hold off. We, you know, we could put it on the next one. We'll do yeah. budget and this on the next one because at that point, I believe we'll have a, a hell of a meeting with the teachers yeah. and there won't be a whole lot of movement on the other one. Maybe a little bit of movement, but there's not. Uh, we'll be in a <coughs> What's your name?
Chair. Aye. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor?